Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Bloom Outdoors. So if you guys can't tell by the title of the video, what we're gonna be doing today, if I mentioned it at least in the title, we're going to be replacing this guy right here. So the dash cluster, as you can see here, we have the, I think it's a 4.2 inch screen that's on there. So, you know, pretty small screen, uh, just the regular tachometer, regular odometer. Uh, the needles light up blue, all the letters and everything are white. Um, just your regular basic screen out of an STX, because that is what this truck is, if you guys know that. <laughs> so I went online, I think the website is called Clusters by Living It Up, but I'll leave the link for the website and this product uh, down in the description below. But here is what we got. If you can maybe tell with the lighting here. But we've got the 8-inch screen. Kind of hard to see with the lights and the reflections and all that. But you'll be able to see it once it gets into the truck. But you can see we've got the Raptor style looking cluster here. Uh, I believe there's a Raptor and a Sport. I went with the Raptor one. The Sport one just looked kind of tacky to me because it said Sport right across here. I didn't really like the look of that, so I went with the Raptor one. I also got the blue needles, and I had him do a red tint behind all of the numbers there. I believe you get it in Lariats and above. I guess I'm not positive on that, but I know it's on the higher-end trim trucks, so it's definitely an upgrade for the truck. should also mention this was roughly $900 for this exact setup right here. So like I said, I went with the Raptor style package. I had him do black rings right around here. He asked if I wanted black or chrome. Went with the black ones, trying to get rid of all the chrome stuff on and in the truck. Not a big fan of that. Um, and then the red tint behind the letters and numbers. And then the blue needles, just the standard needles. So you can upgrade and get the red needles, but I think that was uh, another $50 upcharge. Uh, and I kind of like the offset look of the blue needle with the red lettering. The only thing he did tell me with it is you can see the red in the kilometers there. He said that will clash with the red tint uh, behind the numbers there. Because I think it's more of a lighter red tint that he uses for, you know, behind the numbers and stuff. Versus his darker red. So he said it will kind of clash a little bit, but I don't really care that much. I still think it'll look pretty cool. I saw some pictures on the website of what it looked like, and I think it looks pretty good. So there in the light, you guys can kind of see what it looks like there with the bigger eight inch screen instead of the, I think it's 4.2 inch that I've got in there right now. Here's the old one again. Show you again for comparison, the 4.2 inch. So this new one is basically gonna go all the way over here and all the way up and everything. So it should be digital, fuel gauge, uh, all that kind of stuff. So all of these regular gauges up here should be digital. So first thing we'll do is get this guy popped off. So we'll grab the little plastic trim removal tool. Okay, much better, there we go. Got this popped off of here. We don't want those wires stuck on that. There we go, much better. Now, as you can see, this is one of the screws there that holds this whole thing in place. Okay, yep, seven millimeter bolts for that. Long extension. So, zip those right out of there. Okay, both of those bolts are off. Set that in there before we lose it. Now this whole piece should be free, I'm assuming. There's probably a clip down low. Yep, there's a clip in there somewhere. Probably a clip in here somewhere as well. Now, as you can maybe see here, maybe not, this piece is pretty much free here. Now, this piece should just, this upper piece, like I said, it's got the lines right here. So this piece should just disconnect from that pretty easily. It's gonna be easier to reach those bolts right up underneath there. Okay, maybe I can do it with one hand, even though I'm sure you guys have a really bad angle. 
There we go. Okay, that's disconnected. Now this piece will just come up over the top, just like that. Okay, there we go. That piece is now out. Easy enough. Now, there should be the bolt there. Yeah, because you see this piece here is still connected by that leather stuff in there. So, should just be the, if it'll focus, bolt there, 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 and there. So, I believe that should also be 7 millimeter. And then after that, it should just be the wiring harness on the back side. And this thing should just be able to come right out. This guy out. Okay, the bolts are out of here. So as you can see, we should be open on all sides now. If you can maybe see that. So this thing should just be loose in here. Yeah, and you can see it's loose and free to move out. I gotta get to the wiring harness on the back side. Got that one disconnected. That's it. Tight squeeze. Way get through there. Sweet. Not sure what she can see or not, but as you can tell, the old one is now out. Something I did notice too, on the back of the new one and the back of this one, there is two connectors, what looks like, for wires to go into. Looks like you only use this one with like the plugs coming out of it. So it'd be the one on your right side when you are like in the truck. And there's just one plug back here too. So then as you can see, this is what it looks like with nothing in there. So here again is what the old one looks like. And then, like I was telling you, you only use that wire connector right there with the wires sticking out of it. That's what the wires like going into it, I guess, or the pins going in, but I guess you don't use that one. Now we can compare them side by side here so you guys can see the difference. Lighting is not the best, but it'll have to do. So as you can see the difference of your RPM gauge, what that looks like. So again, the STX versus the Raptor style one. And then over here, what it looks like. So the speedometer is fairly similar, but it is a little different as you can tell. This one gives you all the tens and thirties, the odd ones in there. This one doesn't. Then also you can tell here too, this one has the gauges up top where this one does not, so it's going to be fully digital. It's going to be fully digital on it. Also, this one you see your uh, drive settings, you know, your park reverse neutral drive. This one does not have that on it, so it must be the must be the fully digital one right there also as well. And then I know in with this one, when you want your uh, what gear you're in to appear. And that'll pop up on the right side of the screen there. And then on this one, it should pop up in this section right there. So anyways, that's a little side-by-side -side comparison. One thing I noticed too is it looks like this one's like deeper in. Not really sure why. So then here is like the backs, I guess. This is the one that came out of the truck. This is the new one here. So as you can see, it's the same kind of wiring thing where this is supposed to have pins go into it. Same thing here. So those weren't used. And then we've got the one there and the one there. So that should just be all we plug in and then just, you know, screw stuff in and hope it works. <laughs> okay, nice. So anyways, I'm filming with my phone and it overheated. Um, so you guys missed me putting this in. Anyways, it was a tight squeeze to get this thing in because this one is a little deeper 
than the other one that was in there probably because there's more there's more electronics behind it instead of just the gauges and stuff i guess i don't really know anyways it's a little deeper so it's a little harder to get this one put in place uh, i got the wiring hooked up i tested it out it did work uh, the needles are blue and the numbers and stuff light up red everything on the screen works so i'm just going to go ahead and get the rest of the trim put back on i got the screws in already too so i'm going to go ahead and get the rest of the trim put back on uh get this piece put up and then i'll end up showing you guys the final product getting this stuff put back on should be fairly easy just grab that piece right there put it on top snap it back in get the two screws put in right down here and then just go ahead and put this piece back up and snap it in place so overall so far it's taken me like 15 minutes so super easy and I've been talking to you guys for like at least five of the minutes. So very easy to do this. All right, guys, everything is put back together here. As you can tell, all the panels are in and everything. And we have got this new cluster installed. As you can see, the black circles in there. Excuse the wind noise. Uh, but anyways, you can see that it is put in here. So we'll go ahead and turn the key and it is gonna give the door a jar message because I have both the doors open. Just so you know, so get the key in and turn it. So this is not turning the truck on. The only thing I noticed too is right away when you turn it on, then it shows, uh, you know, the Ford thing pop up right away. And it seems to only be that same like four inch thing. It doesn't go across the whole screen, which, but I'm not sure exactly what you know, the Raptors and Platinums and that kind of stuff do. I don't really know if they come across the whole screen or if it's the same kind of thing or what it does. But anyways, just to show you guys here what it looks like. So you can see the different in reds. So as you can see, he put in this darker red up here so you can see what he was talking about, how it kind of clashes with the light red, which it kind of does, but that's not his fault for doing that. That's my fault if you want to blame it on someone because I told him to go ahead and put it in because that's the way I wanted it. Um, but one thing I'm noticing too is the dashes right above the numbers and stuff. Uh, those are still white. I thought those were going to be red, but they're not. And then I kept the blue needles because I like the look of that. And then just to show you guys, you've got all your different settings here. You can configure this stuff however you want. As you guys know, if you have messed with these before you've got all this kinds of stuff my view over here you got all your trips fuel economy it's going to say zero because i just got this thing plugged in and it doesn't transfer the data from the old one onto the new one and so also when you have this done you have to tell him your mileage um, and have him put that stuff in you have to tell him your hours on the truck like the idle and that kind of stuff too Tire pressure shows up. Uh, digital speedometer. So, engine information. Yeah, there you go. You can see what that looks like. So I had to tell him the numbers there and have him put those in. He has to transfer the mileage and those engine numbers over. Got all your towing, off-road status. All see my old cluster had all the same stuff here as well. I wonder though, it probably didn't change anything with the oil life reset. Oh, 63%. So that's actually reading the same as it was before. Other things too, my truck did not come from the factory with remote start. I added that in and that's something you have to tell him too in there. So I added in remote start. So he programmed it in the settings here to have the remote start. So it shows up here. Yeah, duration 15 minutes system on so like I said that's something I told him I added in myself or added in aftermarket so that's something he programmed in here to have because the old cluster did not have that in there but it seems like a lot of the settings are kind of the same yeah so it seems like my old cluster had all the same stuff but it's just the, you know the upgraded to this new screen so you get all the digital stuff and then i'm gonna go ahead and shut the doors and i'll put the truck in drive to show you the gauges on the side as well get it started up here as you can see what it all looks like 
It says that because of the auto stop eliminator. It did that before as well. That is what it looks like there. So you can see all the gauges and stuff work like that. But if we put it in drive here, it's not gonna pop up right away, but you gotta hit the plus or minus button to get them to pop up and you can, you know, delete them if you keep going down and up and such. So anyways, that is what it looks like. So that part works as well. So you can see what all of that stuff looks like there. So just checking to make sure it works and it looks like it does. So anyways though, I think that's pretty much gonna be about it for this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, go ahead, drop it down in the comments below and let me know. Also let me know what you guys think about the new cluster. I think it is pretty sweet. I do have to say so myself. And like I said, the install is very easy. It does not take long at all to do. But that's pretty much gonna be about it for the video. Link for this product will be down in the description below. Uh, if you have anything else, drop it down in the comments. But other than that, thanks for watching another video of Bloom Outdoors. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time.